So today I'm here at the Arvo Pert Centre and I'm going to show you around and give you a bit of a tour. Now, if you're not familiar with the Arvo Pert Centre, it's a centre for Arvo Pert's music and also for his archive. And really the experience of the Arvo Pert Centre starts here in this pine forest in Laulismar. To actually get to the centre, you have to walk about five minutes through the forest. And that's really, really important and tells you a lot about the whole ethos of the centre, which is that it's about slowing down and it's about finding silence. And that really links in with Arvo Pert's music as well. It's the idea that silence is your canvas and on that every single note, every single sound is precious. And really walking through the forest here, you can just feel your heart rate dropping. And it's designed so that you can't really stumble across it. It's a 40 minute drive outside of Tallinn. So it's about intentionally coming to the centre. And I'm going to show you around, give you a little tour, uh, give you my highlights. So you can see the centre just coming into view around the corner now. And as I said, we're in Laulismar. And I think that's really appropriate because it translates as land of singing. And singing is so important to Estonian culture. Um, for example, the song festival in Tallinn that happens every five years gets roughly 100,000 visitors. And um, often there's hundreds, if not thousands of performers on stage singing and dancing. So I think it's really beautiful that this venue happens to be a musical centre in Laulismar, the land of singing. So the centre is not only in this beautiful, serene setting, but it's also really designed so that it's a part of the landscape. So you can see the curves of the building really follow the natural topography of the forest. And you can see the curve of the roof as well. It just feels like something that's rising out of the forest. And um, one of my favorite features of the building actually is these pillars. And you can see they're sort of uh, one big, one small, you know, and really they're meant to be reflections of the pines. So almost like natural trees kind of surrounding the building, bringing the nature into it. Um, there's also something really special about them, which is that the spacing of them is based around the rhythms in one of Arvo Pert's pieces, Tabula Rasa. Um, and so the architect actually took those rhythms and those structures and translated them into a building. So we kind of get music made into physical space in this landscape. So we're gonna start by going through to the library. And the first thing we pass here is actually a video room showing a film about Arvo Pert's life and a photography exhibition, which features important musicians from his life and cultural figures as well that he's met and worked with. So the library is really important to the Arvo Pert Centre because it preserves Arvo Pert's creative legacy. Uh, it's split into two sections. So on the right-hand side, we have non-liturgical texts and also all of Arvo Pert's scores. Uh, there's over 150 scores here. And on the left-hand side, we have all the sacred texts. And they're really, really crucial to Arvo Pert's music. Um, they're really at the heart of a lot of his writing. Um, now, I want to show you something that I really like about this whole building, which you'll be able to see behind me, is that Everywhere around the building, there are these courtyards. So we just have a little bit of nature and light being drawn into the building. And I think these are really significant, not only um, because they make the sp space feel kind of natural and welcoming, but also they link in with Arvo Pert's musical approach. Um, silence is so crucial to Arvo Pert's music. And the courtyards to me almost feel like small spaces of silence within a building. Um, my favourite example of this is from Arvo Pert's piece, Tabula Rasa. And um, if you've not heard it, I'd really, really recommend going and having a listen. At the end of this piece, um, all the string instruments 
gradually drop out one by one. We're in D minor and there's these descending scales um, gradually going down and down. And as each instrument reaches the bottom of its range, it just falls into silence until all we're left with at the end are the double basses. And we're going down, expecting to land on D minor or just the D on its own. And we go G, F, E, and then we never reach the D. And there's four bars of notated silence at the end. I think that's a really special thing, um, kind of significant, that Arvo Pet obviously wanted this space to be kept at the end of the piece and that the listener can resolve the music in their own mind. Uh, you hear the cadence without actually hearing it. Um, so that's just a small example of how silence really forms a part of Arvo Pert's music. It really treasures each sound and every sound is heard against a backdrop of silence. And to me, this is architectural silence. I'll take you into the exhibition space now. So here in the exhibition, as well as seeing Arvo Pert's quotes projected onto the pillars, there's also some of his original manuscripts and his notebooks, which are really fascinating. But there's something I wanted to show you which you wouldn't necessarily expect to be in an exhibition of this nature, which is this flower pot. And there's a story behind this which I want to tell you. So during the 1970s, Arvo Pert was experiencing a creative crisis. Um, he was searching for his musical voice and someone suggested to him that he could try being creative in a medium that he wasn't an expert in. Um, the idea was to try doing something that he could do poorly at and even to fail, um, to see if that sparked any creative thoughts. And the medium that he turned to was painting flower pots. And interestingly, what he painted was very simple lines. And when he did find his musical voice um, that became so unique to him, which was coined Tintinabuli, then that was also centered around these simple musical lines. Um, the musical language is two voices primarily, the diatonic voice, which is the melodic upper line, and a triadic voice, which shows the lower line and sticks within the triad. Um, and I just find it interesting that this creative seed of something as simple as painting a flower pot could create a musical language, which is so treasured now. So the first thing you notice when you walk into the concert hall is just how nature is brought into the room. So um, we can see the pine forest outside. I think that's a pretty idyllic setting to watch a concert in. And you've got then the oak walls all around as well. And the really special thing about this room is the acoustic. It's actually not so much a hall as a musical instrument. Um, it's a room within a room and the wood on the inside resonates with the music. And that means that you can capture the softest sounds in here. Maybe I should speak really quietly and you'll be able to see that you can still hear everything. Uh, so it's a really special acoustic to perform in. And I've been absolutely desperate to have a go at playing the flute in here as well and see what it sounds like. So I'm gonna have a quick play. So the other thing about this room that's really special is these ceiling panels. And um, they're made out of this dense wood and uh, designed to reflect certain frequencies, which means that you've basically got a hardware EQ in the room. Uh, so here's what it sounds like. So we're coming now to the centre of the centre, and that's the chapel. And this building is actually cast out of a single piece of concrete. And it stands on a separate foundation to the centre itself. And so it's almost as though the chapel is something primordial that has always been here, as though you could have stumbled across it walking through this ancient pine forest, and that the contemporary Arvo Pert Centre has been built around it.
So we're coming now to the final stop on the tour. And whereas the chapel is all about asceticism and stillness, silence and concentration, this is something quite different. It's about finding a new perspective. So we're at the top of the tower now, and it's truly incredible up here. Not only are we above the canopy of the forest, but you can even see that we've got sea surrounding us. So you don't realize when you're down on the ground, you're actually on this peninsula. And so we've got sea to both sides. And that's in some ways the point of the tower being here is that it does give you a different perspective. It's a different way of looking at things and as well as being a local beacon and something that people can look out for, it's really, it's a place you can come to escape earthbound thoughts and just to see the world a little differently. <laughs> 